We are here today to announce the indictment of Stephen M. Howells II, age 39, and Nicole F. Vasey, age 25, both residents of the town of Herman, New York, in St. Lawrence County, on multiple counts of conspiracy to sexually exploit children and the sexual exploitation of children. This indictment alleges that Howells and Vasey enticed and coerced children to engage in sexual conduct and made a video recording of it. Specifically, the five-count indictment returned by a federal grand jury charged Howells and Vasey with the following crimes. Count one, conspiracy to sexually exploit children involving two minor female victims identified in the indictment as V1 and V2, and count two, sexual exploitation of a child, that is victim one. Counts three and four charge Howells and Vasey individually with sex, sexual exploitation of a third female child, identified as victim three. Howells was also charged in count five with possession of child pornography. Now, if found guilty on counts one through four, conspiracy to sexually exploit children and sexual exploitation of children, each defendant faces a statutory minimum of at least 15 years and a maximum term of imprisonment 30 years. On count five, the possession charge, Howells faces a maximum term of 20 years imprisonment, and both defendants may be fined up to $250,000 on each count of conviction. Upon their release from prison, they would be placed on supervised release for a minimum of five years and possibly up to life, and they would be required to register as sex offenders. Now, I want to assure everyone that the Department of Justice is committed to protecting the safety and well-being of every child. We placed a high priority on combating sexual exploitation of minors. We will continue to work closely with our state and local partners to identify and prosecute anyone who preys on children. This case has been investigated, investigated by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, their Albany Division, the New York State Police, the St. Lawrence County Sheriff's Office, and the St. Lawrence County District Attorney's Office. It's being prosecuted uh, by the two prosecutors who stand with me, AUSAs Fletcher and Thompson. Because of the ages of the victims, our office takes particular care in not re-victimizing them by stating their names or other identifying information. And I trust and know that you will use the same sensitivity in reporting this indictment. Child victims of sexual abuse can only be as strong as the protective system and the caring adults who surround them. My office will continue to do everything in its power to prosecute defendants who commit such horrific crimes. In this case, we will pursue all the justice the law allows. And let me make this final observation. This indictment is a product of the rapid response and thorough investigation by law enforcement at all levels, led by the FBI, uh, other federal agencies, the state police, the sheriff's department, the district attorney's office. This was a model of cooperation and collaboration, and there was assistance of caring community members as well. And it's thanks to all of them, it's because of all of them, that we were able to announce this indictment today. Thank you. What were the circumstances of the eight-year-old victim who uh, they're accused of abusing over two years? Um, I am going to be uh, very circumspect in answering questions about the circumstances of abuse, the specifics, and the nature of the abuse. Uh, as you know, the defendants appeared in court this morning. There is a, a detention hearing that has been scheduled next week, I believe next Tuesday, before Magistrate Judge uh, Therese Danks. Uh, we intend, in this case, to present evidence in the court of law, to do our talking and our speaking in the courtroom, and so I'm not going to get into details of the conduct uh, more than what I have said so far. Was there any indication that we have the case of these two victims? Was there any indication that this activity was limited to just these two? Well, I can tell you that the indictment alleges conduct involving three victims. We have victims one, two, and three alleged. And you can take a look at the indictment and see uh, how the counts are set out and how the conduct is alleged. Um, uh, in terms of uh, you know what 
happened to any particular victim or specifics. Again, I'm going to leave that to further development to, as the litigation progresses. V3, can you tell, is there any connection between that victim and victims one and two? Again, uh, a separate uh, conduct alleged and a separate count of the indictment, and, and uh, I don't want to say further about any relationships or, or connection between the victims. I think that, the, again, that is in the nature of an evidentiary matter that will unfold as the case develops. What's the process now, judicially? Does the federal charge take precedence? Uh, we are working collaboratively and closely with the district attorney's office, with the local authorities. Uh, these are separate charges. Uh, the, the defendants are held to answer in federal court for these charges, and so we'll, we're going to continue to coordinate our activity, but there is a separate state proceeding pending at this point. But as far as the defendants go, if they are in the federal system, that takes precedence of the local charge. Well, uh, I, I, I think it's fair to say that they'll proceed on separate tracks, and that there will have to be coordination between our systems in terms of when and how they appear and what effect uh, each case might have on the other. The forfeiture allegation, have the forfeitures taken place yet? Um, no, that is a, a, a typical uh, allegation in these kinds of cases, and, and uh, while well, there's been some uh, steps taken to uh, secure evidence, uh, that'll be a matter that'll be determined down the road. How were the cars used in the commission of the crime? Again, uh, nothing I want to get into, John. Can you say how the information about V3 came to light, obviously as a result of V1 and 2 investigations? I, I'll tell you this: the uh, the FBI has been dogged in its uh, in its work on this case. Uh, we have some outstanding agents uh, working again collaboratively with the local authorities, and uh, we are continuing the work on this investigation. Uh, it's through their continued hard work that we develop information that allows us to uh, take the steps we've taken today, and we intend to continue to examine the facts of this case to make sure that that we are uh, as thorough as we can be in this type of case. Are they investigating to see if there's the possibility of more victims? Um, that's always a concern in cases like this. And so uh, you can see that we have uh, uh, published an FBI tip line, and we would ask anyone who has additional information uh, that could be useful to investigators to contact that number. The victims allegedly used to create pornography, is there any is it been distributed yet, or is that coming? Again, in terms of you know what's happened to it and and uh, whether and how it was used, those are evidentiary matters that I'm, I'm not going to comment on at this point. Because these children are involved, what are, are being done to take them as you interview them, and how, how do you do that? How do you do that? We uh, take uh, our responsibility to victims of child abuse very seriously, and we are we have and will continue to take steps to to get them whatever assistance they need to help them through this difficult process. Can you say anything about how the children and the families are doing, recovering from? Uh, again, nothing I want to comment on. Uh, you know, these, are, these are very difficult cases. Um, we're going to respect their rights to kind of work through this, and we're going to offer whatever assistance we can uh, to, help, uh, to help make that possible. I'm sorry, did you say that the defendants are currently in federal custody, or? They are. They're currently in federal custody. They had an initial appearance today on the indictment, and uh, they have been remanded uh, in federal custody for a detention hearing that will occur next Tuesday here in federal court. Does it remain to be determined whether they will remain in federal custody as separate cases? That's right. I think there will be some coordination with our state counterparts in terms of what appearances are required and uh, what progression the litigation will take in each system. Sure. Just on the basis of being from this county mm -hmm. um, and seeing what has developed as a result of this investigation, uh, are you shocked by what this investigation has turned up no. going on in your county? No, there's, there's nothing here that shocks us. You know, 30 years in this job, it, it, um, there's a lot of things that make you, make you wonder about uh, what people are capable of, but n nothing is shocking us here. This is an investigation that's um, dealing with some, you know, some people that, um, you know, came part as, came about as suspects, and uh, we 
we've arrested them, and um, now we're working with our law enforcement partners to move ahead with that process. All right. Well, uh, we thank you very much for coming out. We have some materials for you, a uh, press release, I believe a copy of the indictment. So uh, thank you very much.